Hello there lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to be looking at some extremely, extremely stupid Switch accessories. There have been loads of really great accessories made by all manner of different manufacturers out there, some of them official, some of them unofficial, and they're great! But there are also some really, really dim ones. We're going to be looking at just five of them today, and they're going to be in no particular order, because that takes the pressure off me. But anyway, enough waffling, let's dive right into things. First of all, we've got this glorious thing, which, um... Okay, this isn't technically, specifically, a Switch accessory, but even so... Oh my god. I've seen a couple of these advertised now with the Nintendo Switch in mind, suggesting that it allows wonderful, comfortable, lazy, hands-free playing. And it's not wrong, but oh my god, it's so stupid. The only time I can really see you wanting to use this as opposed to something that was, say, you know, mounted if you really did want a hands-free experience, I've got that myself, one of those sort of, you know, articulated arms that holds it in place, would be if you're going out and about and the whole idea is the Switch is supposed to be portable, and this thing clearly isn't. Also, this is bound to put some serious strain on the back of your neck and your shoulders and everything like that, which is not a good thing. It's bad enough that you're looking down like this anyway, let alone, you know, with a great big load of weight all being put on the back of your neck. It's a rubbish idea, and... I mean, I think I can see what they were going for, but it just doesn't work. Next up, we've got this thing. <laughs> if you follow me on Twitter, then you've probably already seen this, so apologies for having one spoilt already, but if you're not following me, maybe you should, so you can have future videos spoilt for you. The, uh, the thing's there. This is apparently a dust cover, and it's got, you know, little slots for your games and stuff like that to keep them in place. And it's, you know, as a dust cover, you know, to keep the dust off, no doubt, it works very, very well. It will indeed keep the dust off. However, don't use it if the console's on. I found this purely by accident, and to be fair, for this particular model that you're looking at right now, it does say in the description not to use it when the system is on, because obviously it's gonna overheat it. But since then I have managed to find several more listings that do not have this disclaimer at all. And I know, you know, you could say, well, common sense dictates you don't, but if people don't understand, you know, children or just people who don't understand, you know, overheating and stuff like that, they slap it on, they just sort of think, brilliant, the Switch, you know, I generally play docs, so just leave it on there, and they're gonna damage their Switch. Yes, I know people have done research and have overheated their Switches on purpose to see whether the Switch will turn itself off for safety reasons, and yes, it does, and that is fairly standard for electronics these days full stop, but it doesn't mean you should do it. I don't know, I haven't tested it myself, but I still would not recommend ever using this and having the Switch on. It's just, oh, just, no. Next up, we have got what I have lovingly called Dan's Accordion. I can't remember what it's actually called. It's made by Speedlink and it's not available in the US or in the UK, but it is available in the Netherlands, hence the uh, reference to Nintendan, another YouTuber, who has very kindly allowed me to use this image of the ridiculous piece of nonsense. I can kind of get what they were going for here, and the idea of having additional grips, you know, actually having something to grip onto at the back of the Switch when you're playing in handheld mode, is a very good idea, and one that I've tried, you know, to find in my time, because when I do play a handheld, I would prefer to have a little bit more grip. You know, my hands are a bit big. You get sort of clawy hands and it, it just doesn't suit me. But they had to take it one step further and rotate the Joy-Con slightly. So I, I, and again, I know why they've done this because it better replicates what a, a normal controller looks like um, because you have the sort of the outer two, you have the control stick and the buttons and then on the inside, they're further in. It makes sense because it's easier for your thumbs to move like that. I get that. I get that and I get that they were trying to replicate that so well done in that regard. But when you're playing the Nintendo Switch just normally without this ridiculous accessory, um, you press left and, you know, relative to you and your character will move left. Absolutely wonderful. That's exactly what you want. But when you've rotated the Joy-Con slightly, you're going to press left relative to you and you're going to go left and slightly down. It's a half decent idea with the right intentions, but it just doesn't work for the Joy-Con. You'd have to entirely rework the Joy-Cons just full stop in order to make them work properly using this system. And it just, it just isn't worth it. Also, just, just, just look at it! Next up, one you'll no doubt be familiar with, 
the Hori headphone adapter system. I don't know what it's actually called. This is essentially an audio combiner, audio amalgamator. Basically it takes two audio sources and it sort of uh, pushes it into one set of headphones. That would have been easier to say. Now you could say that this is a solution to a problem that you really shouldn't have because of the whole having to use a mobile device with your Nintendo Switch in order to use it online. And you, 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 you'd, be, you'd be right. But this solution is just a spaghetti of wires going everywhere. And this, this is officially licensed. Nintendo went, yep. That's a good idea. Roll with it, Hori. We, we, we support you. It's definitely not the most ludicrous and it does at least work. But if you're having it docked, especially, I mean, maybe handheld, it's not too bad. But if you're having it docked, you're gonna have to have wires trailing all the way across the room just to be able to hear the chat. It just, it just doesn't work. Also, as far as I know, the headphones that were released with this aren't that great. They look the business, but they don't sound the business. And lastly, we've got this thing. Yes, the Nyko Nintendo Switch Portable Dock, or whatever it's called. The Nyko Dock, it's known as. Now, there might be a number of you that already know what I'm about to say, but for the rest of you, you might well be thinking, Alex, that looks like a great idea. It's a smaller, more portable dock, and it doesn't require having to take the gubbins out of the original dock and putting it in a new one, like some of the others. And you'd be right, the idea of having a smaller, more portable dock to be able to take around, or just not have to use the great big clunker that Nintendo provides, although I quite like it, and you know, sort of people have worries about scratching the screen with the official dock, which is generally unfounded, but even so, you know, it's nice to have an option, so what's wrong with that? The problem is, this dock can brick your Switch. I'm not entirely sure of the science behind it, I think it's something to do with power management or something like that coming from the official uh, power supply, but even so, the idea that you can plug this thing in and the Switch is like, okay, yeah, everything's fine, and it can actually kill your Switch by basically, as far as we know, completely draining the battery and not allowing future charges is really scary. Now, it should be said that not every single Switch that gets plugged into every single one of these Nyko docks is going to be bricked. It is something that has happened to only a, a small percentage of people. But even so, it's a significant enough percentage for Nyko to have to put into to have had to put into practice a system whereby you can send them your Switch if it got bricked by their products, and they will repair or replace it for you. That doesn't give me confidence. And there you have it. Those are the five stupidest Nintendo Switch accessories that we could find in the short amount of time that we had before we made this video. Do you know of some really stupid accessories? Please let us know what they are and share them with us in the comments down below because there may well be enough to make a second video and I love stupid accessories. So I'd love to do a second one. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you offset that subscribe button at a slight angle making it really, really stupid, but comfortable. And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,